Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Planet Zoo Classroom. Um, we're back in episode number two and first of all I want to thank you all very very much that you um, received the last episode so so well. Um, left so much feedback, um, so much positivity on that video um, that I decided I wanted to do another classroom um, today and um, uh, some of you told me they wanted to know what to do um, with the gap between your paths, um, your visitor path and um, your habitat. So with this little gap here to make that look nice. The first thing that you can do and I do most of the times is um, I make um, something with these um, pillars here. Just a second. I just had to look up the word. <laughs> so um, we do something like a curb. That's the first and the simplest thing you can do to make it look a little bit nicer. Just place down um, something like this pillar right here. You can take whatever you want. Um, select. Select this here and then just put it down. Let it overlap a little bit with, uh, with your visitor's path and then just uh, Okay, that's a little finicky right now. Okay, just like this and then do this all the way down your path. So that already makes it look nicer. What you can do else is um, from that on you can now decorate the gap. For that you can use, um, for example, the mulch pieces. I'm going to paint the terrain with short grass um, first of all, so that we won't have the long grass look through the mulch pieces. So, and then again, where are they, where are they, where are they? Done. Okay. Great. So you could put down those pieces in the gap and then go crazy with some flowers just like that. Just like that. You can do whatever you want. You can um, fill it with flowers. What you also can do is, um, for example, you could use uh, those fake rocks, put those in the gap, maybe some smaller ones. And then maybe put some of these in the gaps to make it look a little nicer. That's one easy way what you could do. Um, you don't have to use the mulch pieces. You also can um, put in um, foliage without it 
just like you feel to. Um, if you're going to build like um, a city zoo, then it might look nicer when you put the mulch pieces in there um, uh, to make it all look a little more man-made. If you um, have something like a desert zoo, you might go for the rocks and for the cacti. And um, yeah, so you can uh, so can vary what uh, what you want to do. The next thing what you can do. If you have, uh, I'm going to change the lighting a little bit so that we can see this a little better. Okay. If you have something like this, um, uh, just a little small gap, um, you can do something very easy. We also go to the pillars and we choose a bigger one like this. We also choose um, the angle tool with the 45 degrees, put that one down, deselect that, just move it around a little, make sure that it's nicely attached to your wall and then just move it out like this and also go on with that along your wall. So the gap is also closed and um, it looks like um, just a little foundation you put um, below the wall. That's also a very easy thing to do and we have also uh, another option because sometimes you might have um, uh, some carnivores or some uh, big cats, bears, um, wolf or whatever in, um, in your zoo and you have something like this, um, this mesh fence and you don't want your visitors to go um, to the fence, put uh, put their fingers um, uh, through the fence and um, uh, might get hurt by your animals. So what you can do is um, uh, called double fencing. For this I will... We're here in um, my Swamp Lake Zoo. So we will go there and just copy some of my double fencing. We also might have a look at, uh, at my zoo afterwards, so I can um, show you some things, um, how they look inside a zoo afterwards. Okay, traveling is a little time consuming here. Okay, so we have this second fence. Um, so this one is usually lower than um, your actual fence from the habitat because it um, is not supposed to keep the animals inside the habitat it can um, sure for uh, for like smaller animals but um, it um, should make sure that your visitors don't walk towards the fence of your habitat so you have closed this up and once again in the gap you can um, you can do the same things that we have done before. You can put in mulch and um, uh, flowers, bushes, um, stone, whatever you uh, whatever you want to, whatever you feel to. You also could fill that uh, fill that gap with uh, with concrete or, or something like that if you don't want um, to fill it up with uh, with flowers. We might do that just for example I'm going for the plaster pieces and I'm trying to find uh, 
yeah we're just going with with this big body here and we're just putting this down here So as you see, you could fill the gap um, as well with some concrete pieces or something like that. Um, might not look that beautiful as um, if you choose flowers, but um, it's all up to your taste. So um, that's some options what you could do with, um, with the gaps between the path and the fence. I'm gonna show you now some examples what I did in my sandbox zoo and also I might show you in the next episode if you want to how um, uh, to build custom fences something like this so as you can see um, here at this um, beaver habitat um, I have this custom fence and I chose to fill that gap with um, with our last option with the concrete parts because I was feeling it wouldn't um, match the vibe of this um, when I fill it up with some plants. Then here on that side we have our cougar habitat. Um, and that is something where I chose the double fencing because you don't want your visitors to go right to the uh, to the habitat of the cougars, put their hands um, to the fence, and um, get it uh, bitten off. So here we have this kind of double fencing. Um, I chose a lot of flowers in the gap between this uh, smaller fence and the fence from the habitat. On this side um, we have something like a foundation, we have this small glass fence and something like a little staircase um, uh, to fill in the gap between, um, uh, between the wall and the path. That's something you can also do. Just have a look at it. We have those um, uh, temple pieces um, here on top and another one down there that I lowered just a little bit down so that it looks like um, this little staircase. Then we're going on. Here is some more double fencing here as well for our alligators. And here I haven't done anything yet but I'm going just to extend these temple pieces here, lower them down again and once again we close that gap and everything looks nice and tight as if your visitors could go up there and look in the habitat. Yeah, that's something I wanted to show you um, as you can see, it is um, pretty easy and um, doesn't, uh, doesn't need to be a lot of work what you can do in, um, in your zoo to fill in the gaps between your walls and, um, uh, and your visitor path. Okay, so I hope this was something that... Um, yeah, that you learned um, again and uh, that you can do in your zoos from now on. If you have any questions on this or if you um, do want to see anything else um, or whatever, just let me know in the comments. Leave a like if you want to and um, subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss another episode of Classroom Planet Zoo. And I hope to see you soon 
Um, don't forget to tune in also on Wednesday um, when we will have another episode of Fix My Habitat on this channel and I hope you guys will have a nice day. Bye!